change if we actually want to hold climate change. We can't just recycle a bit of paper and, re and change our light bulbs. Those things might be important, but we actually need to challenge a system that thrives on wars for oil, um, that thrives on free trade agreements that take power away from democratically elected governments and hand it to big corporations, um, and that will profit until the last drop of fossil fuel has been used. We need to inject new values into our economy and into our society, and people are doing it. We've got movements for food sovereignty, people democratically taking over control of their food systems. We've got energy democracy, people taking over control of their electricity systems so that they can run them more fairly and more sustainably. Um, people calling for a, a more just trade system so people actually grow stuff for their own citizens rather than exporting the perfect beans halfway across the world. The issues facing the world in Paris this week are pollution, climate change, inequality, environmental refugees, war refugees and resources wars. Ours is a cry to use the science, use the technology, use the human genius that we have to use less resources, pollute less, protect and preserve more, but above all, also to protect the natural world and the ecosystem on which we all rely. You... And so that means government policies of sustainable transport. It means government policies that don't close down our solar industry, that encourage our solar industry and protect those jobs fight climate change, we need to create millions and millions of jobs across the world in renewable energy, uh, insulating housing, develop the public transport system, have jobs in education, in industry, in waste management, water management, and you know, the list go on. We already know that what's on offer in Paris is nowhere near enough. We know that business as usual will take us towards a world of four degrees warming and more. That is a future of droughts, of desertification and disease. We refuse to leave our future in the hands of those inside the secure zone in a conference centre in Paris. We will take our futures in our own hands here today and take direct action peacefully when necessary to achieve our aims. David Cameron is taking a wrecking ball to environmental policy, slashing support for solar, ditching zero carbon homes and launching a new dash for gas with yet more fracking. And so we're here to say that the fight against fracking and nuclear is only just beginning. From going through the absolute joy of seeing that our councillors were actually impacted by the words of their residents and acted in our behalf and we got fracking as a no. There was a no to the planning. The joy and elation was amazing and we all had some faith in democracy until last week. We knew there would be an appeal by Quadrilla and the appeal was going to be heard in Blackpool, so fine, we accepted that, we would, we would attend the appeal and we expected to be represented. And we've now been told that yes, the appeal will still take place there, but the recommendation will be sent to Westminster, probably to be totally ignored, because they've already decided they want fracking. They're trying to tell us we should be happy with this decision, that this is democracy at work, because it's an elected official who will be making the decision. Greg Clark is the elected MP for Tunbridge Wells. What does he know about the file? What does he know about where Barbara lives, you know? No, he doesn't know what the residence groups think. I mean, for your area, how has a man in Tunbridge Wells got to know the impact? How close Absolutely are you? Absolutely no idea. I live 500 metres from the proposed site. That guy hasn't got a clue about our community and what it's actually going to mean to us. I think we all understand in the climate movement now that it's not just about the climate, it's about the system and uh, the society we live in, the economic system we're living, which is exploiting natural resources, animals and human beings, is capitalism. And this has to change. Without changing now, we won't be able to tackle climate change. We are the wretched of the earth. 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 
we're here marching as uh, as the first people to die first due to climate change, due to capitalism as well. So we have formed a global South Block today to march and build solidarity bonds with indigenous communities which are dying first because of this system. came from the Amazon yesterday, just arrived in London and going to Paris. It's a project of a law in Brazil that will take away all the indigenous reserves. It will put them in the hands of the cattle lobby. It's being voted right now in Brazil and we have to fight it. Deforestation went up in the last two years with a new forest code. It's just getting out of control. The big capital is aligned with the legislators. What do we want? Decolonization! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Decolonization! Now! We're trying to build up a movement for African reparations. When we speak about reparatory justice, we're talking about it in terms of repair, not just compensation, which is what they like to say on the media. Yeah. It's very clear. So we're talking about systematic repairs, cultural repairs, you know, educational repairs, media repairs. Britain is one of the main culprits. It's linked to climate change. Obviously, you know, Africa gets raped day in, day out by colonial powers. I think it's really sad that the terrorist attacks on Paris have been used as a justification for preventing protests going ahead in Paris around the COP, the big climate convention that's happening over the next two weeks. This will not happen and I'm really pleased to say that today the march in Paris didn't take place but instead a human change uh, that uh, lasted two and a half miles uh, took place in Paris despite the ban. So it was an illegal protest but I think people are ready to break the law and we've got no choice really. Football matches are going ahead, the opera's going ahead, the theatre's going ahead, but all of a sudden people want to make their voices heard about the most important issue affecting the world today, and they're told they can't do that. We're going anyway. We're going to take people anyway, because it's absolutely not right that on such an important issue, our, our so-called leaders can make policy without being held to account. It removes all legitimacy from the climate conference. The climate conference can only happen if ordinary people are allowed to have their democratic voices heard there. If they're not, then France should say we're not capable of holding the conference. But if it is holding the conference, the protests are an absolutely vital part of that. These leaders aren't going to come up with the climate deal the world needs. So what we want to do at the end of this conference is turn our backs on those leaders, say shame on you, you're not doing this in our name, and go forward to create a people's movement to stop climate change over the next year. And that's going to mean stopping TTIP, it's going to mean ending austerity, it's going to mean redistribution of income, it's going to mean a very different form of economics. Yeah.